Our investigation into Ivan Milat has uncovered new twists in the serial killer's murder spree. There's the mystery car and claims he didn't act alone. Now another man has come forward sharing his own chilling encounter for the first time. You right? Lindsay Buckland is remembering the day he nearly died. Sorry, I feel emotional here. The day he came face to face with Ivan Malat. It was 1976. Lindsay Buckland was a 19-year-old self-confessed hippie. Now I'm dead certain it was Malat. With bullets flying around him, Lindsay Buckland thought he was dead, running for his life along the Hume Highway, not far from the Belanglo Forest turnoff. Sprinted, absolutely sprinted. Lindsay had been heading home from an alternative music festival south of Sydney. And I was standing with my thumb out, and eventually this ute pulls up, and the guy hops out. He says, you know, quite friendly and quite lovely. Where are you going? I said, I'm going to Canberra. Grateful for the lift, Lindsay loaded his backpack into the rear tray. As he climbed into the passenger seat, he noticed a bottle of water and some coiled up rope. Heading south, there was little conversation. But what he did say to me, he said, uh, oh, have a drink of water, mate. Have a drink of water. Lindsay declined the offer but the driver was strangely insistent. It was a very firm kind of drink the water, like almost, almost like a demand. From that moment on, things went downhill. He went into a sort of a trance, as if I wasn't there. He just focused on the road and he accelerated more. Lindsay became more and more concerned and asked to be let out. And I thought, I've got to get out of this car. Eventually, Lindsay grabbed the steering wheel. And through the pulling process, it kind of snapped him out of his, his trance or void that he was in. Stopped on the side of the highway, Lindsay clambered out and went to grab his backpack. He jumps out and he's standing behind me. So he's not saying anything to you at this point? No, absolutely nothing. It's just silence. He's just standing behind me, hovering over me. As he put on his backpack, the driver rushed to the cabin of the use. And all of a sudden, he's reaching the back of the cabin, behind the seats, and I see this rifle being pulled out. Lindsay bolted. The 19-year-old had recently read a guerrilla warfare book and remembered to zigzag to avoid being shot. There was at least three pop shots at me. Leaping into a ditch on the side of the road, Lindsay prayed the gunman hadn't followed him. It feel like a, a minute's an eternity. Eventually, he peeked over the edge of the ditch. He's already in the cab and he's hightailing it to the direction of Canberra. Still terrified the gunman would return, Lindsay managed to flag down a passing woman who drove him to Canberra. I opened the door and I said, look, I'm sorry, I've just been shot at. Uh, and she's looking, oh, really? Do you want to go to the police? Do you want to go to the police? I said, no, 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 no. I just want to get home. I just want to get home. Why didn't you report this to police at the time? A couple of reasons. One was that I was a hippie, an alternative boy. I knew that I was kind of like in redneck country, if you want to say that. He also felt the police wouldn't believe him. It happened just before Christmas, and his parents were due to visit him in Canberra. He sat us down, he said, Mum, I've got something to tell you. And I said, what's that? And he said, um, I hitchhiked a ride and uh, he said, this fella had a rifle. I don't know who he is, but he said it was very scary. Lindsay Buckland lived overseas for much of the 90s. While he was aware of the backpacker killings, he didn't put two and two together until he saw a documentary and the memory came flooding back. After hearing that Ivor Malat is now dying from cancer, two weeks ago, Lindsay managed to track down the now retired head of the Backpacker Task Force, Clive Small. I want Clive Small to know about this because I got the sense that he knew there was more murders and 
he probably doesn't know that there is an, another person that managed to get away from the clutches of Milan. And in another twist, stranger than fiction, the professional busker remembers meeting one of Ivan Milat's victims. Melbourne teenager Deborah Everest would often listen to Lindsay playing in the city's Burke Street Mall. She used to come and just stay, you know, for at least 20 minutes, listen to the music. At the end of 1989, Deborah told him she was going travelling. And I said, OK, Debbie, that's great, that's great. That's good. See you when you get back. Yeah, 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 have a good time. All, all the usual things. And I never saw her again. Her body was found in the Belanglo State Forest in 1991. Five Small has passed Lindsay's information on to police.